Today's picks and videos are brought thanks to Toro Kane Corso. What's that, buddy? What's that? In the days of the Roman Empire, Romans took such a liking to a big boned, Greek working breed called molasses dogs that they brought them home from the Greek islands, hence later known as the Roman Molossian or the Canis Pugnax, the war dog of the Roman army. That dog is the ancestor to the nowadays Cane Corso, also known as the Cane di Massileo, Sicilian Brancaro, an Italian Mastiff. The Roman Molossian is a shared ancestor with Neapolitan Mastiffs. The breed was formerly scattered all over Italy. However, in recent times the breed was only prevalent in the province of Apulia and in the adjacent regions of southern Italy. The word cane, of course, is Latin for dog, and the word corso may come from cors, meaning bodyguard, or from corsus, an old Italian word, meaning sturdy or robust. In the early days, the mighty cane corso played a role in the military, where they were used to charge enemy lines with buckets of flaming oil strapped to their backs. However, when the Western Empire dissolved in the 5th century, Cain Corsi found themselves working as a farmhand, flock guardian, property guardian, family guardian, and hunting dog, particularly of big and dangerous game like wild boar. Industrialization brought the decline of the Cain Corso, and World Wars I and II nearly brought about the breed's extinction. Dr. Paolo Breber took an interest in the breed when it was brought to his attention in 1973 by Giovanni Benetti, who remembered the dogs from his childhood. In the following year, Breber acquired some of the dogs and began a breeding program, which garnered interest from others when the dogs were pictured in a magazine article. The Society Amatori Cane Corso was formed in 1983, and by the 1990s, this breed was being exhibited in European dog shows. It wasn't until 1988 that the Cane Corso arrived in the U.S. when Michael Sotilli imported the first litter. The International Cane Corso Federation was formed in the U.S. in 1993, and more dogs were imported from Italy. By 1996, the breed had achieved recognition by the Federation Sinologique Internationale, and, in 2010, the AKC officially recognized the breed. Large, muscular, and majestic in appearance, the Cane Corso's size and strength are their dominating features. Cane Corsi are sturdily built but not squat, with bodies somewhat longer than the height at the withers, and are less bulky than most other Mastiff breeds. The head is large and typically molossoid with a wide skull. While the Cane Corsi stop is marked, the top of the cranium is flat and slightly convergent to the muzzle. The muzzle is noticeably shorter than the skull, being the ratio muzzle to skull approximately 1 to 2. It is strong and square, with the front part flat. The upper lips hang moderately and cover the mandible so that the lower profile of the muzzle is determined by the lips. The jaws are very large, thick, and curved. A level bite is acceptable but not sought after, preferably slightly undershot. Cane Corsi's eyes are medium-sized, ovoid, looking directly forward and slightly protruding, with a keen and attentive expression. The iris of the eye should be as dark as possible. Their nose is black and large with ample, open nostrils, on the same line as the nasal bridge. The Cane Corsi neck is as long as the head, strong and muscular, their chest is well-developed, and their back is rectilinear, very muscular and firm. The tail sets on, fairly high, and is very thick at the root. In action, it is carried high, but never curled nor erect. A Cane Corso's coat is short, shiny, and very dense with a light undercoat. The texture is coarse, thick, and sometimes tufted, and some even compare it to the coat of a cow. When it comes to Cane Corso colors, it could be black, lead gray, slate gray, light gray, light fawn, stag red and dark fawn, and brindle, having stripes of different shades of fawn or gray. In fawn-colored and brindle dogs, the black or gray mask on the muzzle should not go beyond the line of the eyes. A small white patch on the chest, on the tips of the feet, and on the bridge of the nose is acceptable. The Corso is a large dog. A full-grown Cane Corso male generally weighs from 90 to 110 pounds, 45 to 50 kilograms, while a female can weigh 88 to 100 pounds, 40 to 45 kilograms. Males stand 25 to 27 inches, 64 to 68 centimeters at the withers, and females 23.5 to 25 inches, 60 to 64 centimeters. 
While cane corsi usually live around 10 years, one study found that longevity may be influenced by hair color. The study found that gray, black, fawn, and gray brindle cane corsi lived on average less than 10 years, while brindle and black brindle cane corsi lived longer than 10 years. The required level of physical activity is medium to high. Grooming a cane corsi is quite easy due to their short coat, though their large size means it's a big job. The cane corso's undercoat will shed throughout the year, especially during spring shedding season. To maintain their shiny coat, an occasional bath and weekly brushing with a natural bristle brush or mitt is recommended, plus daily brushing in the spring. The rest is basic care. Trim his nails once or twice a month if your dog doesn't wear them down naturally. If you can hear them clicking on the floor, they're too long. Check their ears every week to be sure that wax and debris don't build up and lead to an infection. If cleaning is needed, wipe them out with a cotton ball dampened with gentle, pH-balanced ear cleaner. Don't insert anything into the ear canal, just clean the outer ear. It is essential to introduce grooming to the cane corso when he is very young so he learns to accept the handling and stay calm during bathing and grooming. The cane corso is no couch potato. Daily exercise is a must for this working dog, and walking, hiking, or running in the morning and in the evening can maintain their muscular build. Having this said, go easy on puppies. Their musculoskeletal system isn't fully developed until they are about 18 months old, so while they need more walks to help burn off their puppy energy, those walks should be shorter and slower. This intelligent breed thrives on activity and having a job to do. Good employment for a Corso includes herding livestock, learning tricks, practicing obedience skills, or being involved in a dog sport. Quick walks around the block or trips to the dog park are not sufficient for this breed. Keep in mind that if you don't offer up an activity, your dog may find mischief of his own, and you might not be happy with what he comes up with. Toro. Left to his own devices, he may chew your furniture <laughs> and shoes, and even dig holes. Like any large dog breed, the it? cane corso would benefit from having a big, fenced-in yard, not only to stretch their legs but to protect both your neighbors and their dogs or cats. Never allow a corso to run loose. Finally, be prepared for the amount of care and large bills that can go along with owning a large dog. Essentials such as neutering surgery are more expensive for big dogs than for small ones. If your Corso needs surgery for any other reason, the cost of anesthesia will be high because he needs more of it than a small dog. Finally, there are the costs of training classes, entry fees for dog sports, and pet sitting or boarding when you are away from home. Take all of these expenses into consideration before acquiring a Corso because you will be facing them for nearly 10 years. The Cane Corso is intelligent, assertive, confident, and very loyal with an even, stable temperament. Cane Corsi love their families, but they don't always demonstrate that affection in an obvious way. They will want to be near you, but they are not demanding in terms of attention or physical touch. With a deep lineage as working dogs, the Cane Corso temperament can be sensitive and serious. Due to their breeding, Cane Corsi might not appreciate unfamiliar people surprising them as they are patrolling their yard. When you bring a Cane Corso puppy into your life, you want to make certain the puppy is friendly and trusting. When it comes to Cane Corso training tips, prioritize early socialization, obedience training, and bite inhibition to prevent your dog from developing aggressive traits. Don't let them get away with behaviors such as growling or snapping when they are touched or moved, or when they don't want to go outside or go in a certain direction on a leash. Nor should they be allowed to behave that way when someone gets too close to their toys or food. Many trainers agree that one of the most important things to know about the Cane Corso temperament is that the sensitive socialization period between puppyhood and adolescence is crucial. As with all dogs, early socialization with new people, new situations, and other dogs is important so they can be healthy, happy, and thrive. Continue socializing your Cane Corso throughout his life by introducing him to friends and neighbors and planning outings to local shops and businesses. This is the only way he can learn to be discriminating between what is normal and what is truly a threat.
However, even with the right amount of socialization, Kane Corsos may not fully warm up to people other than his family. The Kane Corso is first and foremost a guard dog, and he takes his responsibility seriously. The Kane Corso is not an appropriate choice for an inexperienced dog owner. First-time dog owners and people who have had only soft breeds such as retrievers, spaniels, or toy breeds need not apply. This dog is large, powerful, intelligent, active, and headstrong. Never doubt that a Kane Corso will have a dominant and strong-willed personality. They will. But they will also respect an owner who is confident and who can guide them with firmness and consistency without using force or cruelty. Firm leadership does not mean hitting the dog ever. That not only sends the wrong message, but can also be dangerous with a large, powerful dog. The sensitive Corso understands the tone of voice and responds well to praise and rewards. While some Cane Corsi can get along well with other pets and children, the Cane Corso may be best suited to a family with older children, age 9 and up, rather than a family with babies and toddlers. These tall, heavy, and fast dogs can accidentally knock over small children or unexpectedly injure dog playmates, especially in their adolescent years, when their bodies are still in the awkward growth phase. Furthermore, the breed is known to have a strong prey drive, meaning any fast, unexpected movements might be enticing enough to chase. The reason why, for harmonious relationships with other animals and children, an early introduction when the dog is young is a must. One of the most beloved Cane Corso personality traits is that it can be docile and affectionate, even with children, but this is accomplished with proper positive reinforcement training and socialization. This breed is generally healthy, but as with every dog breed, there are a few health challenges to look out for. Specifically for the Cane Corso, potential health issues include hip dysplasia, idiopathic epilepsy, demodectic mange, and eyelid abnormalities such as entropion, ectropion, and cherry eye, according to the Cane Corso Association of America. Because they are a large dog breed with a deep chest, Cane Corsi are predisposed to experience bloat or gastric dilatation volvulus GDV, which is a serious, potentially life-threatening condition where the stomach fills with air and flips, cutting off blood flow. Ask the breeder to show evidence that a puppy's parents have hip evaluations of excellent, good, or fair from the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals, or hip scores from the University of Pennsylvania, as well as eye clearances from the Canine Eye Registry Foundation. Do not purchase a puppy from a breeder who cannot provide you with written documentation that the parents were cleared of health problems that affect the breed. Another thing that Cane Corsi's parents should watch for is obesity. <laughs> Keeping oh a Cane God. Corso at an appropriate weight is one of the <laughs> easiest do. ways to extend their lives. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget that each new subscriber and positive comment motivates us to create more and better content. Thanks for watching.